Dr. Sprinkle. Yes, hanging out and, hanging out here this hanging time. Hanging out this morning, and you're going to be talking about a new movie coming out? Uh, I've got a couple things out of my personal library that I can discuss for uh, okay. a little while. And what about the game, game, uh, game and book? Oh, uh, well, I'm starting that off actually with a game that just came out yesterday for iP iPhones and iPads. It's a, the follow-up to one of my favorite games from probably four years ago. Just a fun little random time waster. It is called Plants vs. Zombies 2. Plants vs. Plants, zombies. Plants vs. Zombies. It, it, it is exactly what, what it's. It's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, basically, they had they tried to hodgepodge some kind of a story together for this. The basic idea is that you play a homeowner during a zombie apocalypse, and you decide to defend your home by putting plants that shoot at the zombies in front of your house. So yeah, so you have so you have stuff like they call it a pea shooter, and it shoots peas at zombies. You have a. Um, so which side uh, are you on, zombies or oh, you, plants? Oh, you you control the plants, but lay in the main game. But in as they release more downloads, they actually do a few levels where you get to play as the zombies, ah. and the, some of the zombies is. I haven't played through this one completely yet. I'm still going through it. But in the first game, you had stuff like, um, originally it was called the Dancing Zombie. And it was this zombie that would moonwalk out dressed as Michael Jackson from the Thriller music video, and he'd dance and resurrect other zombies. But That's they changed funny. that to a disco zombie. Now let me ask you this: What age? What age would be a, uh, not appropriate? Oh no! Oh no! That, that's a game for everybody. Every, it's, so little kids it, it's, like, it's like you're playing a Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, There's okay. there is nothing bad about that game okay. whatsoever. All right. It's it's a it's a really a good lot of fun, and the guy who narrates it, uh, you know how. In, you always have that one crazy neighbor. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In this game, well you, act you actually have a character in this game named Crazy Dave who goes around wearing a, a metal strainer on his head, all disheveled, and every other word out of his mouth is, I love tacos. Why do I love tacos? Because I'm crazy. And the problem with that is what? I don't see anything. <laughs> not, not exactly. It's just, it's a fun game. You've never it, been in my neighborhood. It's, it's uh, a that's fun normal. game. It doesn't cost you anything. It's a free game. Oh, that's good. So you can, it came out yesterday. It's a, it's a lot of good fun. Great. Now, all right, now tell me something about some new movies coming out that, that you're really uh, well, happy about. Well, actually, I talked about movies a little recently. There's actually not a whole lot coming out that I'm really looking forward to until later on in the year. Then mm -hmm. we start getting stuff like Thor 2, Captain America. America 2 and Anchorman 2. But one show that I'm doing a lot of watching right now is actually Futurama. It's in its final season. Okay. It's from it's been around off on again off again for, for years. years. Yeah. And it's from the cre from the guy who did The Simpsons. The basic premise of Futurama is on New Year's Eve of the year 2000, a pizza delivery boy got frozen in a block of ice and he gets defrosted in the year 3000. So there's uh, all these random, random characters, some of them being better than the, than the rest. The guy actually ends up working for, as a new delivery boy, doing deliveries through space, but he actually works for his great, 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 great nephew. Wow. Who's yeah, about like... 70 years older than he is. Uh-huh. Now, let me ask you this. Where do you see... All of this animation making a turn, like say in five years, do you think that they are going to be even more? Um, well, the, te the technology is giving. I mean, it's 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 nonstop. It, it all depends on what story they want to tell. Animation has to be driven by the story that you want to tell. I mean, that it's one of the. I'm, I know I'm going to butcher the quote, but it's one of the great lines that Disney himself said when they when they start up that animation studio that you can make something look as beautiful as you want to when you're animating it but if you don't have a good story it's not gonna sell now speaking of Walt Disney who is the pioneer for many oh, yes. of this oh yes my mother-in-law Trudy John's mother who is now deceased bless her soul she was one of the original people that worked with Walt Disney Very nice. and did sales. So Very nice. that was back but, uh, when they just started out. But actually, uh, speaking to the crazy characters I was telling you about on the Futurama episodes, uh, I spoke with Mary about this, and we have figured out the next time we do a 
big costume for a convention we go to. We're actually going to go as two characters from Futurama. Okay. Uh, sh I am, one of the running jokes is they have uh, famous people preserved in, like, fish jars. They have their heads preserved so you can still talk to them. Oh, lovely. Uh, I am going to go as the oh, head Nixon. of Richard Nixon in the fish jar, and Mary is going to be dressed as the headless clone of Agnew. Oh, that's going to be And funny. I'm going to be in a handcart, and Mary's going to be pushing me around. That's fine. So we're, we're going to be working on it for a little bit, but if we can pull it off, we think it's going to be now, very, very fun. you have to find a, a jar. Oh, you could probably use one of those. Oh, we, uh, we, we don't even need an actual jar. All that I need to do is kind of like, uh, you know. Can't like, you get one of those um, those uh, bottles, those, I don't want to give a like a, like plug a, out, Like a candy jar. No, yeah, but even those oh. plastic ones that they have the water in that you turn upside down but and put what, on the machine. What, what we could just as easily do is just build the little name plaque around the hole we're going to cut into a hand cart, then just raise up like a, almost like a cylinder of plastic and then put blue cellophane over it so it looks like I'm in water. Oh, that's true. And, and that way it's going to be a lot lighter and easier for me to move around in. Yeah, or get one of those, like I said, get one of those... Uh, Water bottles, you know, the yeah, big one, and cut the top yeah, off, and exactly. then just put we're, it we're over gonna, you. We're going to do a little tinkering, but I think we're going to have some fun oh, with this. We're going to have a lot of tinkering going on there, Sprinkle. But there's actually one last show that yes. I was going to talk about. This is, you know, my Japanese animation pick right now, even though it's a couple of years old. But I just found it. I'm really enjoying it. It's a show called Fate Zero. Okay. It's this. It's a spin-off from another show I really like called Fate Stay Night. The idea of the show is that every couple of years. You have a group of magicians that will f battle each other, and whoever comes out on top gets the whole gets to come into contact with the Holy Grail, and the Grail will give them anything they oh, want. Oh, very pretty. So animation. what you have is you have them. Some these magicians will summon these people to fight for them, and they're all based off of the di greatest heroes and villains throughout history. So you get these oh. really cool new ver new looks of characters. Alexander the Great. Alexander the, in, in Fate Zero, there is just off the top of my head. Alexander the Great, Great, Gilgamesh, King Arthur, if you know your old older legends, the man on the mountain who is the original assassin, you have um, Bluebeard, and I'm trying, I forget his name, but one of them is a knight out of Celtic mythology. Ah. In Fate Stay Night, you still had King Arthur and Gilgamesh, but you also had Medusa, you had Medea, you had uh, Robin Hood. Oh, you got to throw in Joan all Rivers. These She's about that age. All these different characters. Yeah. But that, but what's really cool is they also they take the older story and they put a couple of spins on it to fit the story with the character they want to tell. For example, um, with the story that they tell with King Arthur, the idea behind Arthur's character is that when someone chooses to become a leader or a king, then they are no longer considered a person because they have to think of everybody first. So. <laughs> In the Fates Day Night, so in the Fates Day Night telling of the story, <laughs> King Arthur is actually a woman. Oh! And it, it was—it's this really, really, really cool show. And, and Fate Zero just had great animation style, huge production values, wow. and they even threw in this really great little twist at the end that one of the characters that was fighting King Arthur the whole time was actually Lancelot. Wow. And it's, it's this really cool story. Oh, it's, it's, it's I can really hardly wait. available now. That's, that's right up my alley. Thank you, Mr. Sprinkle. Yes, we gotta take a, a break. We've got to take a very, very short break. We'll catch you on the flip side of two. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. 75th anniversary.